Hello, everybody. Hi, Irene and Mary and Sharma. If you happen to be out there still, Catherine. Hello, Catherine. And Adeline, Kathy Girl, Mary R. And Sharma. Don't know if I missed anybody. If I did, forgive me. Hey, we have some fun cards today. I told my family that I love Valentine's and I had a great time doing all these Valentine's videos, but I'm done with Valentine's now. Um, it's kind of like watching one too many Hallmark movies and you got to blow something up afterwards. My family wants to watch all the Hallmark Christmas movies. I watch two or three and I say, okay, it's my turn to pick a Christmas movie. I want Die Hard. <laughs> so... I personally am done with Valentine's now. I loved them. I thought they were great fun. In fact, when I was reviewing the videos to do the newsletter last night, I just, I rewatched the video from the other night and I could not believe I was a maniac on Thursday. <laughs> it was crazy, but you know, it was fun. You guys made me laugh and well, maybe you made me laugh and then my craziness made me laugh too, but it was great fun to watch that back. In fact, I watched the entire thing, even though, you know, I really didn't need to just to pick up my things for the for the newsletter. By the way, I'm, I'm really not happy with myself over the newsletter this time because I took all my pictures and did my listing before the newsletter so I could show you the kit for today and the cards for today. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to change the pictures. So you got Two picture, two sets of pictures of Thursday's videos and no steambunk. But you're going to see it now. So here we go. Um, let's start. By, well, we probably should start by taking a look at our cards and then we'll look at our kit. So maybe you could come in pretty close to pick up the cards, honey. The steampunk I chose, that's truly, really, that's perfect because you kind of get a view of the whole thing. The steampunk kit I chose is called Adventure Time. And I love this one. This one says, let the adventure begin. And it's the monkey reading the books. And I just thought, you know, that's just such a cool message there with the adventure in his books, you know. I thought that was great fun. You'll see that we'll be accenting and things with real gears, which make these especially fun. And next, we also have Under the Ocean fun. So we have an octopus. <laughs> I tried to make it look like the octopus is holding the tag. This has a diving helmet with a clock in it which I thought was kind of cool. But I love these. Notice the borders with the gears. Isn't that fun? So we're going to have some real fun decorating these today. Next up, here's another octopus. Hi, Betty and Brenda. Good to see you, friends. Mary's asking, how am I feeling? I'm feeling fine. I'm feeling fine today. Got some gold nail heads accenting here too. We got lots of fun accents. Ribbon and nail heads. And on this one, we have a picture of the die I'm including in the kit. Our kit is, I think it's 1995. Maybe you could go ahead and link that in here, honey. Our kit is 1995. Uh, no, is it 1995? I think so. Take a look at your kit anyway. Bryce will tell us when he finds it. But this die is a 1795 die, and it's included in your kit. So, yay. And we also have these. You can't tell from this distance, but these are actually pearlized cards. So we have pearlized cards. We have dies. We have nail heads. We have ribbon. We have gears. We have... Uh, just all kinds of stickers, all kinds of fun stuff. Some beautiful accent papers. This accent paper right here is from, um, not craft style, it's from, um, come on, Deborah, you can do this. Um, 
was our company. Um, they're part of Tonic. It is, oh, Deborah, it'll come to me in a minute when I'm not thinking too hard on it. But this is um, Copper Roses, which is just like perfect for that 1900 kind of feel. So I'm excited about that. I had fun choosing the materials for today's class. Here's our monkey making a reappearance. And this one says, um, all the very best. And again, he's got his books. Are they all the very best books by chance? It could be. And this one, this one was a little bit challenging because I thought the tag wasn't real conspicuous and what it was showing it was very dark. So I actually took some stickles and outlined it. And I think now you can see that it's actually a submarine fish. It's a submarine fish. It's um, um, one of those, it, it's made to look like one of those deep ocean fish with the big fangs and the lures, but it's a submarine that looks like a fish. And if you really focus in on it and look closely, there is actually someone standing in the porthole. <laughs> so I th thought we did a pretty decent job of bringing the fish out of the background on this one. And these were this kit makes six carts. You are correct. Six carts. We'll have a six by six. We'll have a five by five. We have a five by seven pearlescent black card. We have two pearlescent um, European A6. And we have one white European A6. I didn't put a lot of Miri in here. I only used one mirror board sheet. And that was on this one covering the white. Because, candidly, I just wanted to do something different on this one. <laughs> I left the pearl showing on the other cards, but I wanted to do something different. So you get six cards in this kit. And with all of the accents that you get, it's a steal. How much was this? Yeah, it is. This is a 1995 kit, and it's got a 1795 die in it. You are not going to beat this kit today, I'll tell you. Now, obviously, this was a special purchase die for me, and I got a great deal on it. That's how I could do that. But I take care of you, too. And I wanted to do something fun. So. <laughs> Who's cat? Adeline's. You're going to have to start calling your cat what Stella, call, or Stella Thelma calls her cat. That's naughty, kitty. I don't, I, she told me the cat's name once, but in almost every interaction with Thelma, she calls Kitty Naughty Kitty. <laughs> ah, okay, let's take a look at the kit itself. Great fun today. Lots of fun. We're going to have a really good time. This kit is on the website and available. Thanks to Brittany for her extra efforts in making that happen. This is our kit. It's from the Clockwork Emporium collection. And I want to point something out here. When you look at these images on the sheet, the images on the website just don't look like much for this collection. I mean, I don't, it's not my favorite collection in terms of just the way things look in the package. Now, I knew we could make these look fun, but when you look at them, they look dark and kind of hard to read and, you know, but when you take these images out, pop them up, I've done, I'll point it out to you, I've done some things to intentionally give a, a, um, an impression of lightening them up as we worked on them. I think you would agree that the finished cards turned out beautifully, but they look really dark in the packaging. I want you to think about that when you're looking at the other sets in the collection and you're trying to decide, is this or isn't this for me? This was not an impressive kit in the package, but I'm quite pleased with the way that the results turned out. So I just wanted to point that out. Here's our beautiful copper roses paper. Let me see if I can get this at an angle. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? And doesn't that have kind of a 1900s vibe to it with that copper 
It's cut slightly mottled copper and those roses embossed into it. Oh my gosh, I love this paper. And Margie, I had asked her, go find me something that's copper and fits the, the tone. She came upstairs with this and I said, perfection. That's exactly what I want. So Margie found it in the store and brought it up. Now, what's the name of that? It is Craft Perfect. Craft Perfect paper. See, I just had to stop thinking about it. We have 300 GSM cards in all of our, in all the cards in our kit. And as I indicated, um, the, um, some of the cards are pearl. So you get a couple of these. Some will get ivory, some will get ecru. I tried them on the cards and they are equally beautiful. So I'm going to move my envelopes out of the way here just while we're working. But you do get envelopes, of course, for your cards. And then we get a couple sheets of mirror board. You get a six by six, as I said, a six by six, a five by five. You get this beautiful black pearl card, two Anita's um, pearlescent cards, one European A6, two um, European A6 Miri. We get that fabulous die, which I'm going to set this one aside because I already had one open. And my kit doesn't need that die, but the die, I've already pre-cut mine, so you don't have to wait for me to cut it. We have foam squares. We have gear stickers. We have nail heads. We have two pieces of woven iridescent ribbon, and you get a bag of gears. We'll pretty much use the whole bag today. <laughs> now, I played with the idea of including some E6000 glue in this kit, and when it was all said and done, I opted against it only because I glued my I glued my gears down with my cosmic shimmer glue. And they held really nicely with my regular Cosmic Shimmer. However, if you do not have Cosmic Shimmer and you're not confident that your glue is going to hold a heavier embellishment, I recommend picking up... Can you toss me one of those E6000 tubes? I recommend picking up one of these E6000 tubes that... It's just a little tube. They're only like two something. And... Um, this is will bond almost anything to anything that's non-porous. So this E6000 will glue gears onto glass and glass onto other things. And you, you catch my drift. It, it really does a good job of bonding heavier things. So if you don't have Cosmic Shimmer and you're not confident that your glue will hold, I just didn't want it just dump another two dollars and something into your class kit cost i wanted to um, give you that choice but if you want some i do have e6000 glue okay i think we should get this show on the road don't you let's see what we want to start with as always i think i want to start with something easy <laughs> wow i didn't even put any gears on that card I'm going to start with this black pearlescent one. Why? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we get the black pearlescent. The good news, Adeline, is we have envelopes. You can get envelopes without cards, too. So that's good news. Oh, I like that little ding I get on my Apple Watch when it's telling me we're selling things on Etsy. That's nice to know. Okay, let's get our kit out here. I'm for this kit for this card. I'm going to need my black pearlescent. I'm going to need this length of this is the dark orange. I think it's called dark orange with green or something in the woven iridescent quarter inch ribbon. We're going to need some foam squares. We'll get those out. I'm going to, oh, I did put gears on here. 
I'm going to need a few gears. We'll have those ready and available. And I'm going to need my topper sheet. I did not use my background paper in this particular card. Used your E16 glue, dear have you lens to his glasses frames. The eye doctor staff said they couldn't fix it, but they didn't have Debbie's E6000. <laughs> Yay! Do we, did somebody say we had spammers again? I haven't seen one, but maybe. Yeah, they'll go away if they're there, especially when they know they will be reported and we'll shut, see if we can't get YouTube to shut down their ID if they mess with us. Yeah, that E6000, it's powerful glue. Um, all right, let's, we're going to pop out this. You know, one thing, when, when, even when, just getting this out of the package lightens this up a lot. I don't know. Um, but we're going to pop this out. We can set this aside then. Oh, I do need the tag. I also used that one, and I used Let the Adventure Begin. All right, we try to bring you guys the best we can find in everything. And I'm glad to hear that the E6000 took care of hubby's glasses. That's fun to know, isn't it? Huh? The, the eye doctor said they couldn't get the um, get her husband's lens glued black, back into the frame. That it was broken such that they couldn't fix them. But she took it home, put some E6000 on it, and glued the lens back in, still holding. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> All right. I took this frame. This is a three-part frame. I took this apart. I want to tell you something else that would be fun on this one. I didn't do it on this, but I was just thinking about it as I popped this three-piece frame apart. Wouldn't it be fun to make a shaker card out of this and put a couple of your gears in there? Oh, Brenda says, I use D6000 a lot in my ceramic and porcelain business. It's a wonderful product. There we go. Another use. So... Um, wouldn't it be fun to make a shaker card and put some of the gears inside? I didn't do that with any of these, but wouldn't that be a fun idea to use our multi-part frame to put gears in the shaker card? Be fun. Okay. One of the, in fact, one of the die sets by Hunky Dory that goes with the Clockwork Emporium set actually has um, some little paper gears that might be good for the inside of a shaker card. Just a thought. Just a little thought there. Now, I'm going to glue my outside frame down flush to my card. I'm going to mostly center it. I'm going to center it side to side, but I'm going to allow a little extra space at the bottom to put a few gears on here because I think it'd be fun to have some gears at the bottom. Oops. Don't want the glue showing. Can you find me a pack of baby wipes on you? Oh, just if you could bring those down. I don't want the uh, glue showing on the pearl. Pearl paper. I moved it down. Oops, I moved it down a little bit after I positioned it. Okay. All right. I'm just going to wipe that little bit of glue off of my pearlescent paper. Because you guys are threatening me with a shock collar, I recapped my glue bottle. I just thought I'd tell you I, you know, I can be taught. <laughs> 
It may, it may not be easy, but I can be taught. <laughs> okay. In this case, I actually glued my topper flush too. So I'm going to, um, what that allowed me to do was to have my tag standing up higher than the other elements. And I actually, other than adding my um, intentional, um, my intentional embellishments, I really minimized the card designs a bit on these. That's one technique when you have stuff that's really, really busy and you have very, very um, busy scenes in this one. Keeping your elements um, not, not um, complicating things further is one way to um, kind of combat that if a design is really busy. I'll tell you another thing. I tried this topper on all kinds of colors. I tried it on red and green. I thought that'd be really fun to have, to bring out the red or the green in here. It was so distracting. I finally decided the best way to make this darker topper show was to literally put it on black so it was the brightest thing on the page. And then the image just popped. So I tried this on lots of different colors, and my technique on this card was to actually put it on a jet black background so it was the lightest thing on the page, and then my image just jumped off the page. So it really brightened it up. So, you know, it's, um, it's interesting. Okay, let's get our, let the, I need to do a bow. Get a bow going here. I do have a bow maker. As we've discussed, I have like five of them surrounding me here. Hi, Oliver. Good to see you, friend. I have a package on the way to you. I hope it, it got out already. I had to ask for it to go out earlier in the week, and I think it just went out at the end of the week. But I have a package, just a little package on the way to you, Oliver, with a valentine. So I hope you enjoy that, friend. I sure enjoyed your Christmas card. I have it right in my office where I can, it's sitting in my window of my office because I love kids' art. It makes me so happy that every time I look at it, Oliver, it makes me smile. So I just want you to know that I really, really loved your art and I want to see more of it over time because you're a good artist, Oliver, and you're going to be a dandy crafter just like your grandma. So you keep it up, buddy. All right. I'm just tying a double. I'm tying a double at five. It'll be five no matter if you're on the red comb or if you're on the on the um, blueberry combs, you're, it's going to be number five bow, just tied as a double. You have way more material than you need here. So if you decide you want to put another double on another card in this kit or a different kit, um, then you should have enough ribbon here to tie another double. So this is just a really simple, not overly frilly, just a very simple bow. It was in quarter inch. I might have tied it as a single if it, in fact, I would have if it had been a five eighths. But I opted for just a really simple bow for this because, again, I'm tending to find myself minimizing the design a bit because there's so many elements in the card already. <laughs> All right, so here we go. It's times like this in my conversation with with um, Oliver that I wish the the communications, you know, the voice communications went both ways. We've talked about zooming these meetings. 
but everybody's pretty comfortable in this format. Not everybody's comfortable if we start changing things up. So we're just going to continue doing what we do. But it's times like this, I want to be able to hear a voice, you know. <laughs> Okay. Maybe Oliver will grow up and be an artist. Never know. Maybe he'll have his own show and he'll be designing cards for his generation to look at. By then they're probably going to be saying, what is a greeting card? <laughs> but maybe not. Maybe Oliver and kids like him will keep the traditions going. Okay, what did I do with it? I'm missing a tag. I have. There it is. <laughs> I was looking on the floor for it, guys. I was looking on the floor. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, Ellen. It's good to see you. I'm so happy that you're with us today. Thank you for tuning in, Ellen. Remind me what country you're in, because you said it's very late over there. Tell, Remind us what country you're in. We all had that same thought, didn't we, Kathy girl? <laughs> you guys are actually getting um, uh, 12 by 12 foam squares with this set. Which, you know, I think I've told you, I really like the 12 and 12. UK. Okay. <laughs> well, I am so happy that you decided to tune in today. We're doing some steampunk using Hunky Dory's Clockwork Emporium card kit this time. Beautiful set. I was just saying to the folks here, Ellen, that I'm not sure that I think this set, I actually, yes, I did. You actually caught me putting Cosmic Shimmer glue on a bow. This little, um, this little double will hold just fine as long as I don't overdo the glue. This little double, this tiny double bow is going to hold just fine on here without the best glue ever. The, the Cosmic Shimmer will hold it just fine for a little double. Now, a bigger, heavier bow, bigger, heavier material, I'd use the um, best glue ever. But for these little bows that I'm using on these cards, it will hold just fine. Okay, last thing we have to do here is to choose some gears. All the gears in these packs are slightly different. <laughs> Me too, Kathy Girly Girl. I do almost all of my card designing in the middle of the night. And the later it gets, the better my designs are. <laughs> all these gear packs are going to be a little bit different. So you just got to pick out the ones that you like for a given card. So I love the, um, the variety of colors in these gears. I do recommend that you change up the colors and use different colors on one card because I do think that adds something to have a variety of colors in them. This particular pack didn't get a lot of get didn't get a lot of gold, so I'm going to there's the packs they're all different. But you will get a nice a nice assortment, as you can see. They're all different sizes, all different shapes. <clears throat> I'm not sure I want to I'm fussing with it because I'm not sure I want to use all my little ones in one. I really particularly love the little ones. Oh, I love that one though. Except I already have a plan for that one. And I don't want to use two silver. There we go. I'm going to use those three. And I'm just going to put these three gears down here at the bottom.
No, Ellen, we um, we we are simply special crafts, and we're here in Oregon, and we are a little family business, but we love, 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 love hunky dory crafts. We love hunky dory crafts, and we are one. Uh, we probably have the best selection. I know there's people in the U.S. who order more because they're bigger stores, so they order more quantity of things, but we have one of the best selections of hunky-dory crafts of any U.S. company. We've been selling it for a long time, and we have oops, a couple thousand different hunky-dory products in stock at any given point in time we love hunky dory we actually air freight it in from great britain because we love it so much so yes so we love hunky dory it takes us a while to get it sometimes even though we air freight because while we while it gets to us quickly, once we order it, we don't get our orders filled until after all the, the UK merchants' orders are filled. So sometimes it takes a little longer for us to get our hunky dory, but we get it. We get almost all the designs. Every once in a while they opt to skip one, but most of the time we get we get all the designs. Okay. I'm not going to hold this straight up and down because I just glued heavy gears onto it. But there's my beautiful card. We'll take a look at it up, straight up and down once those gears have a chance to bond good and, and glue there. But we'll just set that one aside for now. Let's see what we have next. <clears throat> so we finished one card already, guys. Let's do, this would be fun. Let's do this one. I really like this one with the butterflies. Uh, thank you, Mary Lynn. Hey, Mary Lynn, it's great to have you with us. Welcome, friend. Oh, I love to see new friends come on. And it's so delightful to hear that you ordered from our little tiny family business. I sure appreciate that. Mary Lynn, you and the people on this stream and those out there who may be, who might be um, watching but choose not to chat, you guys allow us to do what we do. So I really, really appreciate you being out there and helping support our little family business. And if you love what you see and you enjoy participating, just keep buying from us. As long as the market is there, I will be here for you. Oh, that's fun that you, it's three hours, but you know, it would be really fun to walk through that retail store for Hunky Dory. I'd love to do that. In fact, one of these days, I fully intend, and then COVID is over and I can get a little weight off and I walk easier. I fully intend a visit to Europe to just see the countryside and enjoy your beautiful country. But I also, <laughs> it becomes tax deductible if I go see Hunky Dory while I'm there. So you can bet that will happen. But I really look forward to, you know, meeting Adam face to face and the other people that I work with at Hunky Dory face to face. I also look forward to seeing their production facilities, and I look forward to um, seeing the the warehouse. So, or, or the warehouse, and then their retail space. So, it's really going to be fun when the time comes that we can begin to travel and <clears throat> get going. And like I said, I got to get my act together and build my stamina for movement a bit. It's, it's gotten worse during the <clears throat> during the um, pandemic because, you know, none of us are getting out and around. Okay, I'm using my...
copper rose paper, guys. This craft perfect copper rose paper. I just cut myself a slice of this. Now, this is my European A6 card. I'm using one of my pearl ones. And I just cut myself a slice of this beautiful copper rose paper that is three and seven eighths inch wide by five and five eighths inch long, which will be a perfect fit for this European A6 card. As we said in our class on Thursday, European A6 is four and one eighth inch wide by five and seven eighths. So basically you're cutting, hi Elsie. We're cutting our, um, our, our layering paper to be one quarter inch smaller in each dimension than, than our, cutting our layering paper a quarter of an inch smaller than our card base. So we can let that beautiful pearlescent shine show all the way around this. We get that pearl and this pearlescent copper rose paper layered up here. Oh my, it's rich. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So let's get this put on here. <clears throat> I don't think it matters a great deal with this rose paper, the direction it is, but it is slightly directional. So make sure you know where your fold line is so that you can put that rose paper so that it's got the best appearance. It's just a little bit directional. It really wouldn't matter. Okay, next up. I'm going to put down my die cut I made as soon as I figure out what I've done with it in my infinite wisdom. Here we go. I've got my beautiful, this die is from, again, it's in your, it's in your card kit if you buy the kit. This die is from Ultimate Crafts. It's the Magnolia Lane Timeless die. Magnolia Lane Timeless, in case you want to check your collection and see if you already have it. That's what this one's called. And I need a something to put glue on. I'm going to use the insert off the pack and make myself a little pool of glue that I can dip into. We've been talking about different ways that you can get glue on the back of your die cut pieces and one way you can do that is don't put the don't put don't make the pool of glue too deep i that's the mistake i made the other night when i showed you this is i got my pool of glue too deep then it sipped up through the you know between the the filigree parts of my item don't make it too deep, but just put a little layer of glue out there. You saw me do it with my glue bottle. And then just dip it. That's one nice way to get glue on the back of your piece without having to... Well, Mary, come do it again, friend. <laughs> um, just do um, that's one good way to get a, a highly uh, detailed piece on without having to outline everything with your glue bottle oh this would be beautiful cards for guys wouldn't it Brace yeah, yeah that's what Hi, Roberta was saying hi Ruth how are you feeling, friend? I hope you're getting better and stronger every day. We know she's getting better because we um, we convinced Laura and we should preview the cards for Ruth's sake because we knew that would just make her feel so much better. <laughs> Everybody else agreed not to look. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm so glad, Ruth.
Okay, I'm putting down my butterfly topper and I'm going to slightly overlap my clock and I'm going to give it a little extra room at the bottom so once again I can put some gears on down there. I'm also going to add to this one. First, let me put this topper on. I'm going to put this happy returns kind of up right over the arm of the clock. What is NHS like? Do you have to pay for it for all medications and bits? I don't know. National Health Service? Is that what NHS is? We don't have nationalized health in the U.S., Ellen. It's one of the great disappointments, perhaps, in the United States is that some people in the richest country in the world, we have people in the United States who cannot get health care because they can't afford to pay for it. Now, we do have social programs that help some from some of the states, but um, it's, it's a sad thing that we have the wealth that there is in this country and we do not have a national health system. Once people reach an age where they qualify, they can get social or Medicare, which is part of our social security program. That's our, you know, elder care program in the United States. We pay into that during our working lives and draw it back out when we get older, but we do not have nationalized health care. Everything's done through private and business insurance and cash out of your pocket. Very sad state of affairs, I must say. Okay, I want one good size gear here. And I'm going to put a couple smaller ones. It's okay to kind of tuck it, tuck the gears even up under your topper. We put our topper up on foam squares so we have room to do that I think that for something special so last time i used three small gears i think this time i'm going to use two larger gears you can do whatever fits guys Oh my gosh. Uh, yes, that's absolutely true, Ellen. I absolutely believe this C section could have been $32,000. Is that about? Well, yeah, Bryce, Bryce is a human resource manager and he sees the bills come through, not necessarily, you know, he sees bills come through and he said a, a $32,000 C section without complications would be a little on the high side, but it can happen. It can happen. Our health care is crazy, though. Thank goodness we have very good insurance through Bryce's work, because I tell you, Lauren's care alone as a type 1 diabetic would could be thousands and thousands of dollars a year if it weren't for the fact that he has great health insurance through his job. In fact, as Lauren has planned for her career, she's had to look for an occupation where one would traditionally have great health care insurance from an employer because otherwise she would never be able to get ahead as a private person, you know, as a private employee trying to pay her own health care with you know, being a type 1 diabetic in this country. It's sad. It's really sad. <clears throat> there we go. There's our rose. I love this paper with these. Isn't that beautiful? What a perfect combination, huh? That copper roses, the gold die cut, the foiling on this piece. 
the gears, it all kind of comes in. Oh, Kathy, that's so sad. Kathy says she has no insurance. They can't afford it. She used to have good insurance, but when she got cancer, they dropped her. I'm sorry, Kathy. That's awful. So there we go. Isn't that a fun card, guys? These are beautiful. These are good for anybody. I mean, these truly are wonderful unisex cards. And it's the kind of card that you will look at numerous times because every time you look at it, every time you look at it, you're going to be attracted to a different element in this. We're using the nail heads from Hunky Dory, so they have that nice texture to them. The nail heads are the only ones of their gems that actually are kind of faceted. So these faceted bright gold nail heads our dye, our gears, and our rose paper. Oh, beautiful. That's number two. Let's keep going here. Let's see what we want to do. Um, let's go to one of our pieces of cardstock for the first time. I would love to see your card, Ellen. You know, um, you can share your card designs. Oh, we have a visitor. We have a visitor. Bryce says, don't start that card yet because we have a visitor. Somebody was out skidding around on the deck and needing to make his appearance known. His treats are in a bag on the... Oh, I, said, oh, I see don't one. Don't fall that. off. Don't fall off. Hey, can you sit down? Can you sit? He's still wearing his Christmas sweater. Okay. Oh, sit down, please. Sit down, please. Can you turn around so people can see you? Can you say hi there? Hi there, everybody. Can you come turn around so people can see you? Hey, there's he is. There's Teddy. There's Teddy. Yes. Are you putting Susan on the desk, Kathy? Said. <laughs> Susan's going to see this and she's going to laugh. <laughs> Hi, lovely boy. Oh, I got my nose washed. Okay, can you turn around and say hi to everybody? Can you turn around? Yeah, you've shown off your sweater. Come over here. Come over here and sit with Mama so people could see you. And you say, hi, I'm Ted. And I should be loved. The world should love me because I'm beautiful and cute. I will be cute. I'm such a cute boy. Yes, I am. And I love to visit because I get lots of treats. I get lots of treats when I visit. Yes, I do. You want just one or two more? Can you lay down? So can you lay down? Sit and lay down. Lay down. Yes, you're such a good boy. Oh, you're such a good boy. He's not in a hurry to leave today. He hasn't had any of these treats for a while, so he's not spoiled on them. Sit. Sit. Lay down. Lay down. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. So on Saturday? No, no, it wasn't Saturday. It was during the week because Brittany, that was just yesterday. Um, Bob took, was going to take Teddy outside to go potty. And Bob got a little confused by Teddy's sweater. He couldn't find the little hook because, it's, of course, his harness is under the sweater. So he thought, oh, Teddy will behave because he's such a good dog. He'll behave. So he took him outside for a walk, uh, not for a walk, but to go potty. and immediately teddy decided that he was going to go for a romp bob tried to call him back and teddy wouldn't come so he came in huh oh so and teddy wouldn't come so bob came in and told Brittany that teddy was loose and 
Brittany went one direction, Ashley went another, and they found him. He was he had taken a romp down. We have walking trails next to us, and he had run down the stairs, the walking trail, back up the other side, and was, you know, uh, several hundred feet away from the stairs when Ashley called him and clapped her hands and he came running because he loves Ashley and he thought if she's clapping her hands I might get to play and she snagged him and oh I'd love to see Charlie sometime Oliver I'd love to see Charlie sometimes Teddy did not get hurt he got snagged by Ashley she nabbed him and brought the little escapee home. I was just glad that this time Bob told us because once before that happened and he got all flustered and he didn't say anything to anybody. So it took us a little while to realize Ted was gone. This time he came in right away and said that Teddy was on the loose. So we went and not we, I was sleeping at the time, but Ashley and Brittany went and retrieved him. Teddy's just such a lap dog. If you sit and pet him like this, he just wants to go to sleep. Yes, he's an escapee. Okay. Well, this has been fun, Ted, but, you know, I think I have to get back to work now. He said, no, I'm quite happy here. Yep, he has sleepy eyes. Okay. We'll see you later, buddy. Thanks for coming to visit. Do not pee in my shop. <laughs> embarrassing to have to admit that he's on restriction from my shop because he doesn't always necessarily behave himself out here. I don't know what it is about being in the shop. He's very, very good in the house, but he's, it's just something about all the accumulation of stuff out here. Maybe, I don't know, but he does not necessarily behave well in the shop. And Yes, in fact, I'll tell you how we discovered that. There was no evidence on the floor that Teddy was peeing in the shop. He was, I have these black wire um, little um, waste cans. And yes, have these little black wire waste cans with trash liners in them to just pick up all the scraps when people are out here working and you know especially when we're having classes they sit all the way around the table on the floor and we were cleaning one night out here margie and i and she went to take the the liner out of the waste can and it was kind of a, it was kind of stuck in there so she picked the waste can up and went to take the liner out of it and as she lifted it up she poured pee out of the waste can and down her clothes. We found out that what Teddy was doing was lifting a leg on all the waste cans. It was collecting in the, because you know, it had a solid, it's mesh, and then it had a solid bottom. It was collecting in all those waste cans around there. Bryce is saying, I can't believe you're telling this story. But that's what he was doing, the little maniac. We were not, Margie was not happy <laughs> for obvious reasons, pouring <laughs> down the front of her. <laughs> so I don't know what it is that he just can't seem to behave well in the shop because he's generally well behaved otherwise. So I don't know. All right. So this time we're going to make this card. We're going to start by cutting a slice off of our cardstock. We want this to be an up and down design. We're going to use our European A6. So I'm going to cut a little slice from here. And when I measure this out to three and seven eighths, it is almost a perfect fit for taking that, that border. Then I'm going to cut this border again. I'm going to cut the length to five and five eighths. <laughs> I 
Well, that's true. Trash cans are not crap. I guess if there's one redeeming thought, that's it. But <laughs> but he looks so innocent, Ruth says. <laughs> that's the problem, Ruth. He smiles at you and then lifts a leg. <laughs> Yeah, he's generally a good boy. I just think I, I have to believe some of it has to do with I have a lot of clutter out here right now, as you can see behind me. And there's always boxes and stuff. And, you know, I just think the busyness of this area confuses him, maybe. I don't know. I'm going with that because it's all I've got to offer. This ended up being just a little wide. So I'm going to take just another sliver off of this just to get my, yeah, just to get my full margins I wanted. Now that's looking good. But before I glue that down this time, I'm going to tie, I've got a piece of this forest <coughs> woven iridescent ribbon. And... I'm going to leave a nice tail because I'm going to wrap this around the outside. I'm going to leave a nice tail at the end of it. And I'm going to tie a 454 bow either on the blue or the red bow maker. It will still be 454. I'm going around my four and picking up just the peg that I want. Now I'm going to five and picking up just that peg. I'm coming over here. Because what I do on one side, I have to do on the other. I'm picking up just the five. I'm coming back. I'm picking up just the four. And I'm going to the left side, and I'm picking up just the four. Down through the hole in my bow maker. I'm going to scooch all that ribbon up onto the bow maker as I pull this around from the other side. Now I'm going to go through that gap in the middle. It's really zero if you're counting the pegs. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to tie a half knot. This is um, directional ribbon, so I want the shiniest side down. I want the flatter of the two sizes or sides towards me because i'm working on the back of the bow i want the shinier side down as i pull this tight i want to make sure my knot's right in the middle i'm going to pull this off of my bow maker and we have a perfectly beautiful bow just that fast and easy i'm going to cut the tail of this quite a bit because this is not a real wide card, and I actually can cut a little extra off of this side. I'm going to flip this bow over. So I'm working on the back again. I'm going to get myself some tape. And this is not included in your kit, but I'm going to use... I'm going to just grab some of this red tape just because it's really narrow. You could use any narrow tape to do this. <clears throat> I love this woven iridescent ribbon. What a find that was when we got a good sale on that. <clears throat> we bought so much of it from her that she took it off a clearance item and put it back in regular stock at the regular prices. So I haven't bought more in because the regular prices were really expensive. But we did get a good deal while it, while it lasted. And the rolls that are still in inventory are still a good deal. Okay, so I'm just rubbing my, rib, my, um, my tape into my ribbon so it'll hold well. And then I'm going to do the most difficult part of my entire card making session here today and that is I'm going to get the I'm going to get the red liner off of the red liner tape sometimes I get lucky we'll see if I get lucky today using a pen to ah look at that look at that 
There we go. Peel the red liner off the tape. I'm going to wrap this around the top of my card. I'll worry about straightening it up once I get it on there. I am going to pull it tight so that my two sides are pretty even. Oops. That was the thought, at least. The two sides being even was the thought here. I want those out straight. Come on. Okay, I'm going to wrap it around the back. And I'm going to seal that off on the back. Then I can kind of straighten up my bow a little if I want to on the front. And we have a pretty, pretty bow on the front of our card that does not make this any less masculine. You could absolutely give this to a guy because it's a nice dark ribbon color and we're not making it all foofy. Okay, this can now go down to our card. I'm gonna go ahead and glue it. I don't know if I ever told you that one of Brittany's um, passions is diabetic cats. She has asked for permission to kind of be the lead person with diabetic cats at the Humane Society. And she takes care of all the diabetic kitties. I'm sure other people do too, but she, in her shift, she, she just has a passion for working with them. And when you ask her about her dream goal, her dream goal would be to run a rescue organization for diabetic cats. <clears throat> when you can get one, uh, um, Mary, that we use these um, embellishment attic bow makers, you can just tie the nicest bows with those. I think we're the only place in the U.S. you can get them. Every once in a while, they're actually made by Embellishment Attic, which is a division of tattered lace. And when you can get them, um, I always pick up a bunch of them because they never last long and then they don't produce any for the longest time and then they'll come out with them again so i'm always on the watch for those and when i see them i buy them up because we sell a lot of them what did i do there's my phone scars okay so i'm going to put my I'm going to put my uh, foam on my tag and I'm going to overlap my clock just a little bit with my tag, run my, my tag right below my ribbon and a little bit over my clock. And this one again says all the very best. I like to think he's talking about his books, all the very best books. Wishing you all the very best is certainly an appropriate sentiment also. I'm going to put a gear down here on the bottom. And I'm going to choose one of my, well, I think I could use an intermediate size one. I'm going to put another gear up here in that space okay i'm going to glue those in place this one's a funny gear because it has some um, screw holes on both sides to screw it into place what i might do with this one just because of the nature <laughs> Just because of the nature of the of the cog, I'm going to um, I think put some little gems there to represent the screws being in. <laughs> Why not? Whoa! There it comes. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this generously sized gear. I 
I kind of like the idea that there's another gear on the card there. I kind of like the idea of those gears kind of matching up. So moving it a little higher this time, just so I can kind of match it up with the other gear there, like they're rolling off each other. And I'm going to find those nail heads, those gems. Here they are. And I'm going to put a little gem over the top of each of those screw holes as if we have a screw in the hole. That actually looks really good. <laughs> you guys are talking about weather conditions today. It is cold and crisp and beautiful. We have almost a cloudless sky. It's absolutely beautiful. The sun is shining. It's gorgeous in Portland, Oregon today. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to put this cog up here at the top. All the gears and all the packages are going to be different. So just choose ones you like. Have fun with it. And sometimes I like to take a nail head and put in the middle of the in the middle of the gear, because why not? Just adds an element of interest. And I think we're done there. Here's today's card. Now, I said it was going to show you what we're doing to lighten up these designs. <clears throat> and on the last card we did, and this one as well, leaving the pearlescent around the edge is lightening up the card. I'm staying with the uh, neutral tones, kind of sepia, copper tones is helping. Don't uh, you do want something with contrast if you put paper in though we needed we we wanted to stay with the color theme but we still needed to kind of contrast I tried putting this one on kind of a mustardy color no 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 it just disappeared but when I put them on the cream color that kind of popped these images out as well so <clears throat> there we go. So we have that one done. Can you believe we're down to just a, three more cards to do? We've done three already. Let's do... Let's do this one next. This one is done on a European A6, a white one, a white card, using this lower corner of her cardstock. <clears throat> so let's get that white European A6 out here. Hold it down on my fold line. <clears throat> <laughs> wow, you're like a frozen tundra up there, huh, Roberta? And now I'm going to get one of these European A6 mirror boards. I like to use tape instead of glue. Let's see, I'm going to recap my glue bottle here. Don't want that shock collar. Hi, Inez. It's nice to meet you, friend. So glad you could hang out with Adeline today. Adeline's one of our special crafty friends. We love her. So it's really nice to meet a new friend. Are you crafty too, Inez? <clears throat> I like to put my mirror down with tape instead of glue because of the reflective surface on the mirror board. I try not to glue on the back of this if I can, because you can actually get a little, you can see, because it's so sensitive, you can actually see the glue line sometimes. So it tends to be better 
when you can to put tape on under the mirror. If you don't put tape on, be sure that you kind of rub out that glue a little bit so that it will be fairly flat and then you won't have that problem. You can use glue, but just take any bumpies out of it. I'm putting my mirror board on there. These European A6 mirror board are made to, with just a little, a little extra area so you can cut it off and you can match it easily. I really appreciate that extra little bit they put on there. Because I'm not always real straight putting them on, so it's really nice that I have a way to match that. Yeah, everybody say hi to Inez. Is Inez a little person, a grown-up person? Tell us about Inez. Okay. So I have that done. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut my, I'm going to cut my image off. Now we're going to use a big piece over here. So don't overcut this. We're going to cut down and across. Don't cut clear across because it'll leave your other piece too small. We are going to cut this to, I want to see what I'm doing here though. Um, I've got to see, I'm not cutting it from this thing, guys, I'm just looking at my picture. I'm going to cut this <coughs> to four inches up here <coughs> because I think I might need to take just a little bit off here to avoid cutting too much off on the top of this. I hope that makes some sense. I want my whole pattern to show. And so I'm going to cut this a little wider so I can trim the bottom if necessary and keep my entire octopus without cutting his head off. So I'm going to go to four inches. And I'm just going to cut partway down my cardstock. And see, that's going to be a really good cut there. We got everything. And then when I trim my extra eighth inch, I'll take it off the bottom. Now I'm going to turn this around. And I'm going to cut this at five and five eighths, which is the width that I want. I'll just meet that cut. Now, see, I have a nice big piece left for my last card. You will see on this one, on uh, my sample card, I have those two edges. How did I do that? Well, this row, this rose paper is almost a dead ringer for the paper that's on the edge here. So I'm going to cut myself another edge piece there. And I'm just going to cut a strip here. I want that strip to be one inch wide. <clears throat> Sure you cut it off the small piece because we are going to use a five by five piece over here. So just cut it off the off the smaller side there. I'm going to add this piece of the copper paper right here. And that's going to look good. We know it does because we see it. Okay. All right. I'm going to put some glue all over here. Really love the materials we pulled together for this kit. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay. I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and put my stickers on before I attach this to my card base. Because, candidly, it's easier to um, clip the ends off my stickers. One strip of this will do both sides of my card. I want the flat side. I'm actually putting the um, this right over the, the pre-printed white line there on the pre-printed side, on the printed side. And then I'm going to put, I'm going to take this one right to the join, just right over the edge of that, where we put the copper paper on. and clip it off now we have that pretty pretty design look what that does for that now we are going to oh you know what i forgot to do i forgot to trim that bottom section i'm actually going to trim that bottom section down to three and seven eighths Yeah, because I wanted to take a little bit more off the bottom. Now I have the margins I was looking for. See here? That looks great now. Okay. Inez is 71. She loved the card you just finished. Well, Inez, it's just wonderful to have you out there, my friend. Love to meet new friends online. Okay. So... We are going to get our tag for this card off of our punch out sheet. And this one I just glued down, guys. I just, I could have put it on foam squares, but I, I tell you why I didn't now that I think about it. I did not put my tag on foam scores because I wanted to glue the gear to the top of it. So I'm going to glue this one down. I run a I don't take the, I usually don't take the little hole out of the tag unless I'm actually using it as a tag. So I just glued it a little bit so the center would stay in. I'm going to come down at an angle, leaving enough room at the top for me to put my gear in. I have a fun kind of swirly gear here. I choose one that has some spokes in it of some sort. I have this really fun, happen to have this swirly one. And I'm gonna put this swirly gear at the top of this tag. And I'm going to overlap it on my tag just a little bit. Then, just for fun, how about if we put a big nail head on top of that? You're going to have more nail heads probably than you need for these cards. Keep those handy because Margie is also going is also working on a steampunk set. I'll show you her first two cards out of her set for Thursday, but Margie's taking Thursday's class and she's going to do another steampunk set with you from the, from the um, Clockwork Emporium set and show you what she comes up with on Thursday night. I'm going to, I'm taking some of the little tiny 
the little tiny gems and I'm putting them in the middle of the gears on my sticker. I chose to use the silver. I could use either the silver or the gold. It really doesn't matter for two reasons. One is that <clears throat> they're supposed to represent mechanical parts, which come in all colors. And two, they're extra tiny. So they're not going to, it's just going to accent and kind of grab the, grab the light a little bit there. Um, and the silver, actually, I have to say, I think the silver actually kind of added some interest. <laughs> so I like that I chose silver. I think I see them more because they're silver. Okay. Two more. I might have to use one gold one. It doesn't matter. It'll be fine. I could just skip one or I could use a gold one. I think I'll just stick the gold one in there. Nobody's ever going to know the difference but you, me, and 2,500 of our closest friends. <laughs> okay. So we put some little gears there. Let's glue this down. Actually, I'm going to tape it down, I think. Let's tape this down to our card base, and then we'll put our finishing touches on it, and we will be done with our fourth. You guys like these cards today? I had a lot of fun making these. There's something about just the freedom of steampunk, you know? It, there was a bit of a challenge because the colors in the images are so dark, but... They really lightened up nicely with the. They really lightened up nicely with the backgrounds and the embellishments, and when you get those those designs kind of separated from each other, I am so pleased with the way they came out overall. I really had a lot of fun making these, and I'm having a lot of fun making them again today. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> excuse me. All righty. Use my tape flag so I can get it all centered nicely there. <clears throat> That's why I think one of the things I like about them, Kathy girl, I like that they're very different than what I usually do. And that makes it really fun. Okay. It's easy to fall into a trap with what we do and have things look too much alike, isn't it? I'm going to put some gems down here in this lower corner. I'm going to put one large and two medium in my little row of three that you see me use so often. Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Well, Is Siri does not have an answer for that. <laughs> On the web. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about, but I have my series set to an Australian voice, <laughs> an Australian man's voice. Okay. There we go. Isn't that fun? Come in a little closer, huh? Isn't that a fun card? Hmm. 
<laughs> Brenda says, I thought Siri had an answer for everything. Well, since I have no idea what Siri thinks, what Siri thinks I was asking, I love the way that the, the um, this has the um, diverse helmet with a clock in it, and it seems like the octopus is holding that timers. Oh, thank you, Danielle. I love this card. It's made. Uh, what did she say? Uh, to go from hearts and love to steampunk is like going from sea level to 10,000 feet. Yes, thankfully. <laughs> I said, I love our Valentine's cards and I super enjoyed them. And if you haven't made them yet, make them because they're great fun. But I was ready to move on. All right, and we're probably more creative because I made a lot of Valentines. Okay, time to make our next one here. This time we're going to use a six by six. Glossy accents is a great idea, Kathy. That is a super good idea. I don't know if I have any up here. That's a super good idea. I'm going to do that. Yeah, you can choose your voice for Siri, Sharma. And I have an Australian man's voice. Oops, you can also choose your watch face. And I happen to have a little red-headed puppy on mine. <laughs> All right. Let's... We've got our six by six card. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut myself out a piece that's five and three quarters by five and three quarters. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I take it back. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to just cover my card. I'm looking back at my inspiration card, I didn't leave a border around that one at all. So, oops. Let's just put some tape on here. We'll cover this card and we will be off to the races. You would not believe the conversation we got into Thursday night, honey, about sexy cards. <laughs> I thought Margie was going to potty her pants over there. She was laughing so hard she couldn't catch her breath. And the whole theme of the evening ended up being sexy cards, didn't it, guys? I have to admit I laughed a lot when I was watching the video. Last night at the Thursday night class. That was a wild thing. <laughs> okay, cut this off. Okay, this card has another of these nice gear pieces on it, so let's do that. <laughs> it was so crazy. <laughs> Kathy Girl says Bryce would have been mortified with all the sex and card talk. <laughs> Glenn wanted to know, oh, I just peeled off the wrong sticker. It's kind of an interesting sticker, though. Um, Glenn wanted to know if we had been drinking. <laughs> it was a fair question. <laughs> uh, just decaf Coke. Hmm. I wonder what would happen. I wonder if I would like this. I, I may be redesigning something here from my original inspiration card. I'm going to bring this flat side of my sticker up to that white line. We'll see which one we like better. 
I think I like the flat edge against the white line, but we'll see what you guys think. Because <clears throat> I did it differently than I did the first one. What do you think? On the line going out or on the outside coming in? What do you guys think? <clears throat> Bryce liked the outside coming in on the original better. What do you guys think? I think you're going to have to move your topper over a little better. It's going to look all squished. Oh, that's a thought. Bryce says he thinks I'm going to have to move my topper because it will look squished against the back of the line. Let's see. I'm going to leave it there for now. I can actually peel it up for a few minutes here. So we'll see what it looks like. If I don't like it, we don't like it when it's done. I will change that. It may have been why I did it that way, but actually I'm going to be okay because I did have a little spare room there. So I think it's going to be okay. I think I'll leave it. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what we got to do here now. This time I took the two outside frames. Now I will tell you I experimented with this. You guys know yeah, but Glenn wanted knitted underwear. I think he may have been tipping a few caps. He said, <laughs> did you hear about Glenn's comment about knitted underwear? <laughs> I did play with this a little, separating. In fact, let me just separate the rings so I can illustrate. I tried playing with this a little, separating the two rings like I so often do, and um, turning one on corner which I often do, and then putting the topper on it. I opted not to go with that because when you put it on your image, it added busyness, and we already had an awful lot going on. Now, if you like that, you can keep that. You can go with that. I went with a little simpler design just because the image was already busy. Now that I look at it again, I don't think I mind it. Maybe we'll make this one that way, and then we'll just, once again, we'll compare. Huh? Let's do it. Let's make it this way. I, that when I look at it again, I don't think I mind it so much. So let's try it again and see what we think. I'm going to glue down this outer ring. Then you guys can vote on which design you like the best. <laughs> That's a funny comment, Kathy girl. Okay. Let's glue this outer ring down. See how I want to center that. What else have I got going? I've got the... Well, I don't necessarily have to put the embellishments in the same place either now that I think about it. So, I actually put that down so that the two bump outs are side to side. Just seemed like a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what we like. We'll put them both side by side and see what we like. We'll vote between design one and design two, and then you do whatever you want. There are only going to be slight differences, but it still would be fun to change it up a little, because you know me, I sometimes just have to do that. I'll try and make this somewhat even so that the designs correspond a bit. You know what we should have for dinner, honey? Noodles. Noodles restaurant. Would that be fun? Huh? No. I want both. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs>
We're going to Kelso tomorrow. I have a rental up there I have to check out, but I also want to hang out with Mom a little. So we'll be going and getting my favorite fish and chips tomorrow. Captain Yobies, if you ever find yourself on Interstate 5 going from Seattle to Portland, swing into Kelso. There is the most delectable little hole-in-the-wall restaurant called Captain Yogi's. It's on Allen Street in Kelso. Let's take the Kelso exit and go straight on in, and you will see Captain Yogi's sitting right at the foot of the Allen Street Bridge. And I do so love Captain Yogi's. It is the best fish and chips in the entire world, in my humble opinion. There's nothing humble about me, by the way, guys. That's a lie. <laughs> but um, they do have miraculous fish and chips. It's beer-battered halibut. with, But the batter is ever so slightly sweetened. And crispy. It's crispy and cakey at the same time. I don't know how to describe that, but oh my gosh. And then they have dill pickle um, uh, tartar sauce that they make themselves. So very, very, very good. I do so love it. It is always a treat. I think I'm going to go ahead and still put this gear at the top. I like it there. So I'm now going to put this gear at the top of my card. Happen to have the same gear I had my inspiration card, but you don't have to use this gear. You can use any gear you want. Uh, no, it's a small family-owned business. They only have them. They only have the one at one time. Um, they had three of them and the owners are getting older, you know, and you consolidate when you sometimes consolidate and, and make your life a little easier as you get older. So now there's only one. They had three of them all in Kelso Longview, which are Twin Cities. And now they have just the one location. It is a hole in the wall restaurant. I'm telling you, it is definitely a hole in the wall. In fact, the building they're in was once a gas station. <laughs> a gas station that my dad worked at when he was a teenager. <laughs> <clears throat> Little gas station. But the best fish and chips. I love it so very much. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's just like my favorite thing. It's one of my two favorite foods. I love me some Captain Yobies and I love me some Pietro's Pizza. Both of which explain my figure. <laughs> Although Bryce makes a million things that are also my favorites. There's two different classifications. There's your favorite get it out food you know um, and then there's your favorite make it at home foods and bryce has a it, it would be hard for me to choose among bryce's dishes because he has so many good ones oh my gosh you've heard me talk about him he has so many good things he fixes it's hard to pick but those are my two favorite takeout restaurants Oh, see, I love those little restaurants. Okie dokie. Here is version two. This is version two. Let's see if we can get enough room that both of them get equal attention. Here's version two. Here's version one. It's time for a vote. Let me tip them back just a little so you can see them. Version two, and this is version one, the original design. Here's version two. Okay, it's time for a vote. Vote on one or two. Which is better? Version one, version two. 
this is number one, uh, this is number two, this is number one. Number one is the one that's got the solid gold. Which one do you like the most, Kathy girl? Two, says Betty McSorley. Two, says Brenda. Two, says Kathy girl. Two, says Elsie. Well, and who says Roberta and who says Mary R. So I guess we have we have a new reigning champion. There we go. Design two wins. I like them both, but I think I have to agree. I'm going with two also. Oh, Bryce, they're always oh, Sharma says one. Ruth says two. Sharma and Bryce voted one. What's well, fun? It's always fun. I love the, you know, just the challenge, looking at it, saying, what do we like the best? All right. Now, we have one topper left. And as I said, this was my pesky little topper. And I want to show you why I put the stickles on it and outlined it. It's an optional step, but come in close again, huh? This is the topper without and the topper with. Now, maybe it's okay. You know, as I see it on camera there, where it's a little bit bigger, the fish is more conspicuous. But if you just look at this and you didn't know there's a fish there, it's actually kind of hard to find the fish. In fact, the first time I looked at it, I thought, what am I looking at? So when I made it to try and avoid that, what am I looking at feeling, I actually outlined it with stickles. When I see it larger here, it doesn't need it at all when I'm seeing it on my larger screen. But when I see it on my, on, when I saw it in person where the images were smaller, it was hard to pick out the fish. Now that I know the fish is there, I can see him clearly. I'm going to make it without the stickles and then we'll compare and we'll see whether or not it really needs something to set it apart. <clears throat> As our starting point here, we're going to take a piece of our copper roses paper. Ah, yeah, Kathy, what a surprise. <laughs> Try stickles on the round thing, you said? Okay. When we get there, you can define the round thing for me so I know what it is. <laughs> Oops. <clears throat> this is really a fun kit. And the kit's out there right now, guys. This is a really good value for this kit with the die. And the die, by the way, Margie's going to use the die again on Thursday. It will not be in. Oh, okay. I Naz and you both, Adeline liked version two. Good to know. Behind the fish. Okay. That might, that might do it, huh? That might do it. Bring the fish out. Good idea. Well, take a look at that. It's a snowman. Oh. <laughs> Brenda says the round thing was the snowman and what's new Wednesday. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> Oh, I like the glossy outlines on the window, too. Oh, that's a good idea. Do we have any of that up here? Would you look? I do have, I have crystal, I have crystal lacquer. Um, look in the glue drawer and see if there's a little crystal lacquer, if there isn't glossy accents. Crystal lacquer will do it, too. Do you have glossy accents? Oh, crystal. Well, there we go. Let's use that. It's the same. Yeah. 
perfect. Look what my honey found. We're going to do it. This um, the, the stuff that I use, the 3D crystal lacquer that I use in the um, on the um, bow pins is also just like a glass, glossy accent. So we'll use some of that. It's funny how you can use some of these some of these um, products for double purposes, huh? All right. Let's see. So I got my card covered. Feels to me like I over a little bit here. I'm going to trim just a bit. So it's not distracting. And uneven. There we go. All right. Boy, I love that paper. Look at that paper, guys. Is that beautiful? My goodness, that's pretty. All right, now let's get our cardstock. I used I used the upper corner of this to make this card. This was a five inch, so I'm going to go four and three quarters by four and three quarters. Now I'm going to cut that down some more because I have that beautiful, you know, I gave it my regular quarter, um, quarter inch and just little margins. I want more of that red, that copper showing. So I'm going to go to four and a half or four and a half just because the copper rose paper is beautiful. There we go. Now we got more margin showing. I like that. Let's glue this down flat. Is it tea time for anyone other than you? It's almost tea time for me. I don't know what, whether I'm going to have tea or something else, but I know it must be getting nigh on lunchtime. That I know for sure. <laughs> Bryce is shaking his head. I think so. I think it's getting close to lunchtime. I love the idea of putting the, the um, glossy accents on all the little clock faces. And this piece of cardstock here has lots of those little clock faces. Look there. I love that idea. That's a really good idea. Okay, we've got our fish, or it's not really a fish. It's, it's a submarine. We've got our submarine topper. We're going to put that on here. Then we're going to put a few gears, a few nail heads, and then we're going to uh, and some glossy accents. There will not be glossy accents or crystal lacquer in your kit, but we do have crystal lacquer tubes in the store. I think I actually have some glossy accents too. I'm not certain about that. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but Glossy Accents was a great idea for this kit. We're going to go back and add maybe a little of that in some other areas. I like that idea. That's an inspired idea. I'm going to put that clock face right there, right in the corner of that topper. I'm going to put a few gears on here. I have this really wild gear here. I hope it will hold because it's really heavy. But it is a very, very interesting one. Look at that. It's thick. It's heavy. It's like... But I think it'll work. I'm just going to have to glue it solidly. Maybe I'll wait to put that on because I can't hold it up once I put that on. I'm going to put a gear over here. <clears throat> what else have I got left for gears? See, every one of these packs of gears is different. I'll put one down here. Hmm. I have an interesting little one there that I think I'll put to match up with that one. That is really a heavy dude there. Oh, she has some. Uh, she's she saying use them. She has two here. She said. Uh huh. And she just sent me two more. Oh, good. Third before you're done. Excellent. Okay. 
So Margie's out there making her Margie cards. And Grace said that she just sent him some pictures. We had the two that she left here for me to show. And then she has some more done that he has pictures of. So that's fun. Brenda asked, was embossing powder work for the clear accents? I don't know why not. Um, fill it in like with an embossing pen. Sprinkle a little tap off the extra. Sure. Why not? Why not? Overheat it. Yeah, don't overheat it because you want it glossy. But yeah, that's true. Perfect. I'm impressed how much you pick up sometimes just listening. You don't think I pay attention? No, that's because you snore <laughs> through my glasses sometimes. <laughs> I don't want to mute your microphone over there because I think you're snoring. <laughs> but this great big gear on here, this great big one I've been talking about, I don't know that I'm going to want to mail this card. I think that thing is going to add too much weight. But it's really interesting. It's got an interesting vibe to it so i'm using it oh i nest left okay are you heading now to adeline we're going to show margie's cards here in just a fraction of a minute as soon as i get this done okay we got that got one to glue down on the bottom then we're going to put some glossy accents on and see what we can do with those windows. I do so like that idea. So you guys think of things I don't think of. I love the group brain trust that we have here. Okay, I'm going to put a few nail heads in the centers of a couple of my gears because why not kind of look makes it look like screws in there and i like that idea i think that's fun i don't have any bronze colored ones so i'll be using in some cases different colors but you know don't you think they probably have different colored screws and mechanical devices i think they do sometimes Especially old equipment where they've replaced parts, huh? Kathy's girl husband can snore and listen at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has me snoring on movies on. I ask him if he wants to watch it. He says, yes, I am. I say, how can you be watching when you're snoring? He says, well, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Grace. <laughs> You guys would not believe the number of times this guy goes to sleep while I'm here. And I say, was it a good class? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. He's snoring through it. Okay. All right. So the round thing behind it. The difference is I get up at 5.30 in the morning and you get up at noon. Well, that's true. Bryce says the difference between us is he gets up at 5 in the morning and I get up at noon. <laughs> oh <laughs> okay all right so next thing up let me show you where we are now i think i can tip this a little bit if that big gear falls off we'll not just too heavy to be tipping it so now we got to decide where we're going <laughs> We're going to, I want to put some glossy accents on all these clock faces. And I do very, oh, see, that's a brand new tube. I can tell because it still has the little clip off part on the end. I'm going to try and open that with a pin rather than cutting more of this off if I can, because I want a fine tip. Let's see if this will open with a pin. Oh, yeah, it's already open. Okay. All right, let's put some of this. 
don't know how much is going to come out, so I'm going to use a real light hand. Just barely. Okay. Now all we're going to see initially, guys, is we're going to see kind of a cloudy nest there because it comes out cloudy and dries clear. But I am going to put some on these clock faces. I think that's a really neat idea. Okay. There's actually my little clock face here. Tiny little clock face there. Okay. So I put that there. Maybe by the time that we are finishing up some of those clock faces will start drying enough that we can see oh and then betty had suggested putting stickles on the round thing in the back to bring out the fish the round thing uh, um so there's kind of an ornament that's a little obscured by the fish but there's kind of an ornament thing behind it is that what you're talking about, Betty? I can't recap my glossy accents. Yeah, there is an ornament thing back there. Yes, okay. Let's try it. I mean, how do we know unless we try, right? So let me find some gold stickles here. There it is. <clears throat> I got to reach over my glossy accents, make sure I don't smear them. And I'm going to come in here and go just on the frame of that plaque sort of thing in the background there. And I'm going to go very, very light-handed, just get a really light line to kind of bring out that ornament in the background. We'll give that a shot and see what we think. I'm going to set this aside for a minute, let those glossy accents kind of do their thing. It's not glossy accents, the crystal lacquer people won't like me for that. The crystal lacquer, let it do its thing. I'm going to put a little of that, though, on a couple of these other cards faces, because I really, really do like that idea. That one had one good size clock right under. Oh, and then, nope, that's not the one. <laughs> Keep one of these undone so that we can look at our finished ones at the end. Okay, monkey in the clock. I think I do that one because the clock faces look like they're, you know, intentionally looking far away. Oh, this one would be fun though. Okay, I'm going to put a little on these. I love the clock in the diving helmet. That's really fun. So putting a glass face on that sounds fun. Wow. Congratulations, Annette. <clears throat> okay. 
Well, I'll, we'll be looking forward to that. What day is the wedding? Oh, and then we have this big clock. Let's do that. Do the face of this one. Our best friend wedding tomorrow. Not for us, for this. Our best friend. Okay. <clears throat> if you wonder why I'm picking up my card and dropping it, I'm trying to get that glossy. It's a dimensional material. I'm trying to get that glossy to kind of smooth out. And sometimes you can, yeah, the pressure of dropping like that can actually smooth it a little. Okay. One more. Ah. Okay. Well, we'll be looking forward to wedding stories. What day is the wedding? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Thank you. I, Bryce said that, and I didn't pick it up. I'm going to have to do the same thing, pick my card up and kind of drop it a little bit to settle the... The accents on here. How long does those accents take to dry? I don't know. Um, they're uh, dimensional, so maybe a while. So we may not see the finished result. Okay, let's see. I think we're done with that for now. I'll lay that flat because that is not good when you have a dimensional product leaned up. Okay, let's see some of Margie's creations coming up here. This will be your class on Thursday. We do not have the kit on the site yet for this one because she's still working on the cards. But Brittany will put it together Friday when she's here. Here's one, our dapper chap. Note that she's using the die from today's kit. I like this one. I really like it. The dapper chap. And her second one is a gatefold card. This is interesting. She's got a gatefold with a big topper, which you don't often see. I think that's really neat. So we've got the hot air balloons. Beautiful. And I want to point out what she did here. She rounded her card face too to match the contour of the of the topper I think that's fun see there she's rounded that out she covered the flap on the inside which is fun she put her clock on the inside and put her topper on top of that I thought that's fun very cool card this one too get it down here far enough to show you the whole thing without getting into my wet cards. So these cards, now Bryce has some pictures. So if you want to go to your pictures now, honey. Oh, this is one picture. DL card. She made a DL. So, card number three. Oh, I love that. Look at the way that. Now, we had a big discussion. Is this a steam engine or a steam car? I 
it's I don't know the answer to that. It's a steam motation device of some sort. <laughs> And she's working on another one. So you'll also have a surprise card. So it looks like she's going to have about five cards in her kit for Thursday. And an inspiration card. And an inspiration card, she says. So fun. It'll be fun to see what Margie comes up with. I love these two. Absolutely adore them. Yeah, Brenda says, it's a steam machine. <laughs> Good call, Brenda. <laughs> oh yeah okay these are great now see don't you think these cards are turning out better than this set looked in the packages these are good cards these are beautiful cards beautiful so We'll have, we had clockwork today. We have clockwork on Thursday. I don't know yet what's going to be on Saturday next week, but I will have a few days to work on it. Margie said, I will be happy to cover your class on Thursday because I'd like to do these cards anyway. So look at that. She's becoming very um, camera friendly, don't you think? She'll still be sick to her stomach before she shows it to you, but um, she's... She volunteered for this duty. She volunteered. And she said that, she said, but I'm not volunteering just to have you watch me do my class. You have to be busy making the next thing headline. <laughs> so I will do this presuming that you stay busy and get something done while, while I'm doing it. Let's see if we have any progress on the, any of our cards. If the if the fog is clearing enough to see what those glossy accents are going to look like, I think we can tell from our monkey card. I'm going to tip it up real quickly, and then I'm going to put it back. You can tell from our monkey card, that's really adding a very, very, yeah, I can tell her not to be nervous. That isn't going to help, Mary. <laughs> she knows she's among friends and that you guys are very, very nice about, you know, our, our humanness. Look at those with the glossy accents on the clocks. Who said that glossy accents? Was that Kathy Girly Girl? I don't know. Whoever gave the glossy accents suggestion, what a great, great idea. Isn't that beautiful? I love what that adds. It's just like it brings those forward. Here's our monkey, another of our monkey cards. Look what's happening with those clocks because we get those on there. Wowzer. The glossy accents are just truly, truly beautiful. I can't tell what's going to happen with my porthole there yet. I can't see that. I do think you're right, Betty McSorley, that putting a little bit of stickles, ooh, see, that's going to, that, it's hard because I don't want to mess up the glossy accents and it's still, it, it's pooled fairly deeply on that clock. So um, I do think that out, that ringing that clock, or excuse me, the plaque in the back of that fish does in fact help bring that fish out. I said I was going to show you both of them and we compare. I just don't want to mess up my card with that porthole. That... This is the porthole with nothing. And then you can see where it's going to be glossy. It's not clear enough yet to see what we're going to see through the porthole. But I think one thing I do know for sure is you're going to be able to tell it's a porthole better. I don't know, guys. What do you think? With or without the glitter on the, or the stickles on the fish? 
Their vote is with or without. With or without the stickles on the on the fish-shaped submarine. Um, with, Annette says, this is with. The other one is without. With and without. With stickles, Ruth says, I love the portholes. I just got to say, the clock faces with that shiny on them, that is just making all the difference in these cards. What a grand idea. Bye, Karen. Bye. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh, Karen just came in. Hi, Karen. Hello, Karen. Okay. With or without the stickles on the submarine? With stickles, with stickles, with stickles. Brenda says without. We have a couple withouts. So it's kind of like going to be a dead heat, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, I had one gear left from my kit. I'll probably go back and add one more to one of these cards because why not? You can't have, you almost can't have too many gears on Steampunk. Were these fun? These were great fun. I've shown you what's coming up next week. So, or uh, next Thursday. Um, Wednesday, we're going to have some new stuff coming in. So that's fun. Um, oh, if you ordered a loom kit and didn't get it yet, uh, or if you ask for one, I still have several loom kits here that um, we put together for those of you who requested them a couple weeks ago. So if you requested one and you didn't get it yet, they're here. I do have, if anybody was is kicking yourself and saying, oh my gosh, I wish I had. I think I have one extra. Um, you can go ahead and, and buy it. Um, and don't miss getting this kit. This I don't have a lot of these. Um, I think... I, I, I can't tell you how many right off the top of my head. We don't have an awful lot of these steampunk um, card kits put together. So if you want one of those, grab that. And we have our beautiful Valentine's kits out there. I can look and see if there's other color. Is somebody requesting a different color? Yeah, well, you did, but we used an awful lot of them, so I don't know how many, how many other colors we have. Bryce is saying the only one left is yellow. If you really don't want yellow, oh, he said now he sees a blue one, okay, and a green one and a pink one. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm only teasing you. Um, that there's blue and there's yellow. If you wanted a different color, you just couldn't be happy with that, then let me know and um, I will see what I can do. There may be some stray yarn here somewhere that I can substitute. So get your Valentine's kits. One and two are now out there. Don't miss your chance to make the sexy Valentine card. And these other just... Really, really, really pretty, feminine, gorgeous Valentines. Don't miss your chance to make these. Don't miss your chance to make these beautiful cards with the with the dufex. These are out there. Valentine's kits one and two. If you <laughs> look hat kit, loom. <laughs> That's okay. Um, if you um, want to get kit two, remember you need to get kit one because we're using the paper from kit one for both. You will have enough, <coughs> enough papers in kit one to make at least 25 cards. At least. There's so much to this kit. And remember, they don't all have to be Valentine's Day. This would be a perfectly marvelous Mother's Day card a beautiful birthday card, 
even a wedding card with the roses. So you've got, you know, this is a great get well card and an all occasion card. So you don't have to make them all into Valentine's. It's just a beautiful pink rose kit. Get kit one, get kit two, and clockwork kit um, adventure time is out there. Um, I tell you what, when, when I go in the house, I will link all three of these kits, the two Valentines and the clockwork adventure time. I'll link those on the comments below this video. And um, I'm also going to put a link out there for our newsletter. If you're not getting our newsletter, you're missing out because I'm sending you links to all the products we're using as well as links to the videos. So if you're not getting our newsletter, let me know. If you think you've signed up for the newsletter and you believe you're not getting it, contact me, info at Simply Special Crafts, I-N-F-O at simplyspecialcrafts.com and I'll research that for you. If you're not subscribed to our channel, hit that subscription button because you don't want to miss what we're up to. You never know what we're going to be up to in this group. <laughs> we may spend a class talking about sexy Valentines. Uh, you don't want to miss that. And uh, finally, if you haven't already, yes, is the newsletter the one about what's new Wednesday in classes? You are absolutely right, Karen Williams. Debbie, do you know if you have any Valentine's Day stickers in red? Any Valentine's? I have Happy Valentine's in silver, which can easily be turned red. Uh, get your um, get your um, your big intensity markers or your um, Sharpie marker out and turn that silver sticker red. And on second thought, that might not work. Oh, that might not work. Um, if you haven't already hit the thumbs up, give me the thumbs up. Let me know you like this class, you like what we're up to. And you want to see them continue because that gives um, that gives our um, YouTube the knowledge and understanding that we like what we're doing out here, and that they should recommend us to other potential viewers. And there we go. Are there any questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom? Really liking the way these stickles are clearing up, or this glossy accents is clearing up now. Look there. Isn't that just so cool on the clocks? In the absence of any questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom, I'm going to say good night, Gracie. Bryce and I will see you on Wednesday. You're welcome for the teddy cam, Mary R.